Welcome, this is Beyond the Here Now. I'm your host, Antonia Lau, and this is a show that will take you a moment to wrap your heads around new thought, new thinking, new ideologies than you've been taught to think and to believe about yourself, the world around you, and your place in it. Today's topic, we're going to be talking about the meaning and purpose of ley lines on the planet. Now, it's important for you to understand something. You know, in today's day, we now all need passports to go to another country. But if you go on Google Earth, do you actually see, like I said, real border lines drawn when you go on the satellite view? Do you really see the lines and borders of the countries? I think not. But you suppose that they're there because government bureaucracy has said you're going to use a passport to get into that next country. But actually, the Earth doesn't have those kinds of definite lines, does she? But what you don't see is most important of all. You understand in your own body, you have vein structure that carry the blood through the heart and through the entire body and the organs in your brain. You may not know or may not realize that we also have electrical highways through the body, and that's through traditional Asian medicine they'll use through the, the uh, subject of um, the study of acupuncture. So they know when those meridians or electrical highways get blocked that you don't see. It usually causes issues of disease or, or some problem in that body or from the highway, what, longs run, what literally runs along that body and literally based on that meridian point. So they've correlated that science for over 5,000 years to a high degree of accuracy. So you don't see that either. So Mother Earth or Planet Earth has her own similar systems. So whether you see them or not doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Remember, um, it wasn't until the 19th century, uh, actually the, yeah, the early 19th century, where doctors started washing their hands before surgery um, because they didn't see germs either. So you have to understand what you don't see doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So there are souls that have always been part of the planetary structure that have been created here or um, how can we say it, had that time of sojourn here on the earth that have been sentient or aware enough to feel, sense, and or be told by beings perhaps more intelligent than we are or where they exist. However, in today's modern society, it's rarely discussed or talked about, but yet it has an importance, so much so that we find many, many unusual how can I say it? I didn't want to say coincidences, but many, many unusual facts about those ley lines and their correlation to Western world and the life we now see in the modern age we call modern. But this has been done or seen or planted back to our prehistory, before our known history. This has begun, let alone in ancient history and is now seen finally by those aware enough or drawn to know that there was an original purpose for these energetic lines that Earth herself holds and has. So, so today I'm happy to see, or happy to have with me today, Dan Shaw, who is an expert on the ley lines with his organization or his website, vortexmaps.com. And I want to just say thank you for being here with us today. And Dan, please say hello to the audience. Hello, everybody. Dan Shaw here. And Dan, you look like you're out in the field today. <laughs> or you, you may be sitting I'm, on an actual ley line, or maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm visiting the grandchildren while my car is in the shop, so it's, it's a little noisy in the house, so I, I came out to the, the car. And we thank you again for taking the time with us. So may I ask, Dan, uh, if you want to give a little background, please, about how you became interested in ley lines at all? I became interested in ley lines through divine providence. I had been studying alchemy and extraordinary healing tools for a couple years with a group of folks in Austin, Texas in 1986 and 87 around the time of the water birth of my son and the harmonic convergence. Oh, wow. 
So I, everybody comes to the study of, of earth energies from a different angle. Yes. And I arrived, I say, through the heavy hand of my guides and angels. I had been studying more broadly alchemy, which I think of as being the perfection of ourselves, the perfection of the human body. Yes. And for me, the study of the earth energies, very much like the study of the acupuncture meridians and points, is a subset of alchemy. It's a tool towards our perfection and our ascension. Uh So it didn't happen that I slipped into a vortex, and that's how I became a vortex detective. Rather, I was studying ascension and extraordinary healing more generally when I was introduced to what I call vortex maps, these visionary maps that show off in the geometry, not just lines, but sometimes five and six pointed stars, geometric relationships of vortex points. And uh, when I saw those, those vortex maps, it, it triggered something for me and they were delivered up to me actually in the, in the, in the days and, and minutes really, in the hours after my separation from my wife at the time. So it was totally clear to me that as one chapter of my life seemed to be closing, Another was opening up, and these maps were delivered to me as as a gift some thirty years ago and they've they've really inspired and carried me wow. since that time for thirty years so um, early in my childhood at about age seven, I found a way to meditate and started meditating nice. at age fourteen. a uFO turned on its lights for me, and although I don't associate either of those things directly with vortexes. Those were both influential turning points for me in studying paranormal places. The interesting thing is I've noticed when you brought in the, the sighting of the UFO at seven, um, as I understand, um, and as the public is learning uh, recently. Sorry, Sorry mm-hmm. meditating at seven and the UFO sighting at 14. But Oh, at 14. Okay. But go on. But literally what happens is that soul that was conscious enough to meditate, that's excellent, at seven years old, and that awareness at 14 to be literally connected to or contacted to the UFOs. What ended up happening, what ends up happening on the planet is we have to recognize we are all genetic makeup of those beings that are throughout the divine cosmos. And we are here and all on special duty, so to speak, for soul growth to improve our personalities, I like to say, and to leave the world better than we came. But many of those benevolent, um, how can I say it, cousins of ours, or our brothers and sisters throughout the divine universe, they always know and can sense and peer, and they look for whoever's from their particular lineage, so to speak, and they're kind of like tutors, oh, look at the growth on this one. Oh, look, he's part of us more, more predominantly. So they try to boost us, so to speak, just by being gung-ho for us, while we're here as part of the planetary structure. For instance, I'm not sure if you're aware that Edgar Cayce talks about Jesus, uh, the Christ of consciousness, was from Arcturus. And people, of course, you're not gonna hear that in normal conversation, but Cayce's work is quite confirmable. And we find, and he found that benevolent ETs coming exactly at this time of great earth and human evolution are actually from that planetary sojourn. So it's, it's nice to see that your contact was already starting with the opportunity for meditation as well as for connecting to your, so to speak, brothers and sisters from the divine universe. So, was, go ahead. As, as a child, I, I was hoping uh, that, uh, you know, my real parents would take me away from, from my, my earthly parents, but, uh, you know, it Darn took it. a... <laughs> It took a long, t- took a long time uh, uh, for, uh, let's say, the next shoe to drop after that, <laughs> that, that UFO saw me and turned on its lights. Uh, there was a lot of kind of ordinary, standard American childhood without any, <laughs> any remarkable incidents to report at all. And I, I, I haven't, haven't ridden on a UFO, so I think... Uh, I'll just put a shout out out there. It's time. It's time for you to come back, probably. And <laughs> you never know. 
they could have just erased that part. But uh, what happens is, um, at least you're aware that it's it always, I always find it very arrogant when humans believe they're the only beings that exist on this one little ball. And we've got, you know, 99,000 other um, galaxies in this particular universe. And there are multiverses throughout the cosmos. So, you know, but that's the way the suppression of the powers of be at this time would prefer it. That's where they can maintain that power. Yes, and the vortexes is really about those all those multiverses overlapping, where they overlap or where the veil is thin between them. And in, in, I guess, in an extreme sense, mm -hmm. uh, the vortexes are interdimensional gateways that uh, we can travel through, that other entities can travel through. And I don't think every vortex is an interdimensional gateway exactly, like the, the Bermuda Triangle or, or Sedona, Arizona, let's say. Uh, I think they're all a, a different and unique in their own ways. Uh, they're all diverse, even though they're all one. Um, but uh, there are many uh, different phenomena that occur, allegedly occur in vortexes that occur at paranormal places. Yes. And uh, interdimensional gateways, I think, are uncommon, let's say, relatively uncommon. Uh, compared to all the other phenomena that are reported, just kind of more like garden variety psychic experiences. Okay. But I think in in some cases we it's, we do see interdimensional gateways and time slips and and such. Okay. You might know better than I do. Uh, again, <laughs> I'm I've done I've I've been researching for some thirty years, and uh, I have had uh, some miracles in my life and and various uh, psychic experiences at vortexes. Mm -hmm. But so often I find. Well, I do my vortex research by talking to folks such as yourself, who've, yes. who've maybe had more direct <laughs> experience of uh, phenomena, psychic phenomena associated with a place specifically. Right. Uh, right. You know, you're likely to have more of that kind of direct experience than I do. So I do my vortex research by talking to other people who are knowledgeable about their own places. I'm in. I'm actually in Southern Oregon, okay. uh, about an hour north of Mount Shasta. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Goosebumps again. Okay, so <laughs> I remember uh, attending, uh, I was actually doing a workshop. Um, actually, was it one workshop or two? Um, during the, the uh, was it 2012, there was a big conference there with several well-known speakers from um, Dr. Carl Johan Kalaman on the uh, Mayan calendar and several uh, lesser speakers. And I was also speaking at that time, but it was at the time when the galactic, um, there was a gr brilliant eclipse that was going to happen. The galactic eclipse that hadn't happened for 26,000 years. And we were all there for the conference. And I remember, um, seeing several things and feeling several things. Well, after several days of being busy, it was only a four-day conference, but I was busy for several days after, and I finally got a chance to feel the mountain. And so it was Eric Starwalker, who also um, explores as a brilliant astrologer who explores that galactic uh, vein of astrology. He had suggested I visit one of the lakes there. And I remember driving up through the mountain and going to the lake, and all of a sudden as I got out, I was overcome with this strong urge to get straight to the ground and sleep immediately. It was so overwhelming and powerful, it was un unheard of. And I thought, whoa, wait a minute. I stood up, and it was still saying, go down, go down. And I thought, but leaves, dirt, you know, and I've got to be at an appointment in a couple hours. And, but I still had the urge. It was so overwhelming and empowering that I believe I got down for a bit and then said, okay, I'm sorry, I've got to get up and to leave on to my next appointment, brush off and leave on to the next appointment. But I realized if I had time to really pull into that energy, it, but it was overwhelming. I never had that quality of energy. It was just um, a, the lake. I think it was, I'm not sure. It could have been Heart Lake. It could have been, I'm not sure which one of the, the, lake at the lakes at the time, but just right amongst the tree branches, there's no nothing there but nature, and I'm, I'm always mm -hmm. so I could tell it wasn't the natural energies that I would face if I was going on a walk or a hike or through the woods. So it, it was something drawing. So in Shasta, you're an hour from there. I hope you happen if your your plan involves perhaps uh, heading that way. 
but um, and we know that Mount Shasta is, of course, one of the entrances is stated that we can enter the enter in the inner earth. And just a note on that: apparently, there is a highly developed civilization, and that's one of the doorways that during a previous earth cataclysm, and there have been several, earth has to grow. This is how we grow. She can't stay in the same clothes that she had long ago. She changes, she grows, natural cycle. But under one of these other natural cycles, uh, civilization went in and they became more aware um, and more evolved than the surface dwellers that remained. And so they decided, well, we'll just stay here, <laughs> so to speak. And apparently they have a strong energetic phase or feeling that is permeating all of Mount Shasta. So that, that was one personal experience, but in your experience of, of drafting and grafting and watching the ley lines, may I ask, share with us please what you found about the ley I love that you saw the, the geometric sacred geometry or the patterns of geometry, or geometry throughout the planet. This is incumbent. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So whether we're doing um, the Kabbalah, um, like I said, um, qualities that you found on the ley lines or the other lays. Can you tell a little bit more about that for, for those qualities that exist within the ley line? I thought for a second I heard you say Kabbalah. Did you, yes, did I you did. mention the Kabbalah? Did the, I hear that right? Yes, the tree Well, you, you, you are psychic, so I, I shouldn't be surprised. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> I, I often... Mm, emphasize that the energy of vortexes is available everywhere all the time. People sometimes think they have to go to some distant exotic place to feel the energy of the vortex. That they, oh, I'll never get to the Bermuda Triangle, I'll never get to the pyramids in Egypt or whatever that might be. It's important for people to recognize that there are vortexes everywhere and in your own neighborhood, in your own yard, in your own home office. There are these points and lines of energy permeating, permeating everything. So these are, to my mind, these are both electromagnetic energies, mm -hmm. geophysical energies, and also more subtle energies that we might think of by names such as chi or, or yeah. prana or, or these myriad names for energy. So these energies of the earth these geophysical energies are available to us for our psychic opening for our mm -hmm. physical healing and for harmonizing the planet so those are my that's my core message as an alchemist and a geomancer i'd say uh what i what i find uh is that there there are these places around the earth that that uh, activate my chakras mm -hmm. that are help trigger my spiritual process that it, uh, produce a kind of um, ascension activation. So, so I have, I've written a little booklet called uh, Vortex Field Guide, the Shasta Vortex Field Guide, and that points to a number of places around Shasta. The landscape is so rich, springs, yeah. waterfalls, peaks, uh, magnetic fields uh, due to the volcano. Yes. Uh, Etc. So, uh, I propose that by traveling to a number of different places in any vicinity, really, that we can go through um, a chakra activation. That there's a unity, a relationship, a unity between our own physiology, our own electromagnetic field, the aura, and the electromagnetic field of the planet, so that. Uh, with the awareness of the possibility and the intention that we we have this very intimate relationship with the earth itself, very much as Eric Starwalker pointed out uh, with astrology on your show yes uh, that there's a there 's a reciprocal and intimate connected relationship between our energy field and the the planetary energy field and mm, I tend to I have a degree in geography I tend to focus. Uh, a lot on what I call the geophysical energies, the electromagnetic spectrum, seismic energies, acoustic energies, and such as mm, stimuli, really, for our energy field. So 
the kind of the textbook example for me of that would be a waterfall oh. because waterfalls create a lot of negative ions in the air. Yes. We're breathing those electrical energies in and the acoustic environment of waterfalls is so rich that as we move around the waterfall, as we turn and face different directions, we are being stimulated with a broad range of acoustic frequencies and then often a dominant frequency, which sometimes we can feel resonating with a specific It's shot. a holographic experience. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's, it involves mind, yes. body, and soul, and all those things and the subsystems of the human body and soul that we're not aware of, but it integrates all of those. And I can tell you, oh my mm -hmm. God, do I love the waterfalls. So it's <laughs> important that we, it shows that you're talking about this energy has a symbiosis, symbiosis between us as uh, humans and the earth herself. In other words, that's how we oscillate or work through here with those energies kind of working through the us and vice versa. I'm not so sure about yeah. the energies from us to her, but from her. <laughs> literally the earth to us has been um, a beautiful system. So in your, I like the fact that you also mentioned to the audience that you don't have to have or go to the grand uh, points for these vortices to be effective for you. Because we live around them. And I understand that major cities, since um, ancient history, literally, and that's not too far away, um, they show, because there's history that predates that, but there's, they show that the modern cities we see today actually were along the ley lines. Is that correct? Very often true. And we see on the, in, in the whole earth, we see that many ancient monuments are built in a geometric pattern, a geometric Hold on one second. There was a freeze there for a second. And uh, there we go. We can hear you now, I think. Okay, I apologize for that. Oh, it's I a digital that, age. <laughs> I wondered how that might work. Um, you were we, saying that we, as these energies, we don't have to go directly to those spots. They're always integrated, and the cities have been built. They found cities, apparently. Um, I, was, I was going to say, on a worldwide scale, we find ancient monuments are built in geometric relationship to each other, so that uh, for example, I've published a couple maps, vortex maps. One of those is called the Earth Star Globe. Uh, many of your listeners may have uh, seen this Earth Star Globe before because it's uh -huh. been around since the 1980s. And the Earth Star Globe shows the Earth grid, and that grid is a combination of the icosahedron and the dodecahedron, two yes. platonic solids which are dual solids, they nest perfectly inside each other. When you combine the icosahedron and the dodecahedron, you, you find that there's a grid. Uh, it fits very beautifully around the Earth uh, of 62 points. The Earth grid is, is centered on, it's uh, essentially locked down at, at the Great Pyramid, the Nile Delta in Egypt. And then there are other ancient monuments at geometric points all around the Earth. And that's uh, at the planetary scale. And then as we zoom in, so to speak, we find that pattern in a kind of a fractal or holographic nature at smaller scales. We find other patterns of sacred places and very often in geometric relationships to each other. So I'm particularly interested in uh, these uh, sacred places. We're fading out on there for a second there, but it should hold. Um, Geometrically uh, related to each other. Uh, the ge should I continue? Yes, you should. It, it's just going to clear uh, up in a second there. It should? Sure, sure. Um, a little bit of artifacts there. Just saying <laughs> that the uh, there are there are geometric patterns of sacred places, of vortexes all over the world, uh, certainly uh, in your hometown. And uh, ancient civilizations seem to tap in, somehow mm -hmm. tapped into these geometries and these sacred places 
whether consciously or subconsciously, with superconsciously, however you want to look at it. So, uh, as often happens, uh, these energetic spots have uh, or in mineral deposits mm-hmm. uh, often, uh, which leads to unique soil types and a unique plant and animal species. They have uh, often dramatic kind of topography, uh, valleys and mountains. And so people are attracted there. Uh, animals uh, are attracted to the energy. And uh, so often uh, towns and cities do get built on these energetic points, uh, again, by design or, or sometimes unconsciously. Sometimes mm-hmm. people might think they're going to Lake Tahoe to to gamble yeah. uh, or <laughs> Or to just to enjoy the scenery, or Vegas for that matter. But uh, there, there may be things happening on a more subtle level. Uh, we may find, just as you found yourself drawn to, to lie down on the ground, mm-hmm. uh, you know, there's, uh, we're all operating on a, on a certain level of, uh, on our own levels of the spectrum of consciousness to unconsciousness, and we may mm-hmm. find ourselves drawn to places and not, not know why. Exactly. But these places, I think, uh, they 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 hold energy. They hold our own emotions and memory, and yes. often often the behaviors uh, repeat. They recur along these ley lines. So, for example, uh, Peter Shampo, who is a vortex researcher, mm-hmm. my word, not his, but uh, mm-hmm. he wrote a book called Gaia Matrix. Yeah. And in the Gaia Matrix books, uh, there's maps of all of North America. Uh, it's a remarkable book, just uh, chock full of all different kinds of visionary maps. In the Gaia Matrix book, Peter Shampo puts forth what he calls the Empire Ley Line, mm-hmm. where he shows that these uh, centers of empire all over the world are are aligned. And other types of ley lines, he also gives some rather evocative emotional names and he likes the term lay l-e-i as in um, oh, wow. a string wow. of flowers yes how about you lay what is interesting is you mentioned that even on a subtle basis or subconscious basis people may be drawn to these lines and, and centers the odd thing is i had a child many years ago i it was thrilled um a, a little boy but what was interesting is i the first toy i bought was a decahedron it was called the shapeo ball by tupperware <laughs> i know and the one i think i know the one red and blue or whatever it was and he loved that thing and you know very few months old he could put all those shapes in but it's because of that underlying level of connection um and that was you know one of my gifts for the soul coming in and incarnating to the earth again but children um, and adults were playing with all these things, all the shapes and sacred geometry, and not recognizing they still have an impact on us. Um, again, mind, body, and soul. So um, I was really curious when I saw it in your books, and by the way, the audience can know that they can check out your publications uh, for themselves at vortexmaps.com, correct? And your po- uh, It is. It's Vortex Maps. Mm-hmm. vortexmaps.com and people will be able to see the earth star globe uh, other visionary maps that i've collected uh, and shared and uh, they'll they'll be able to get some free downloads of samples of my writing and such very good and this is so they can learn more the trick is um i try to offer on my shows the 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 sheer direction so they can see without asking or listening to what we find as the official uh, information about it, because that tends to be misleading or no information about it. And we think it doesn't exist. Whereas experts like yourself and Shampo and others can offer us this knowledge that's right there now available on the internet. One of the reasons for all this knowledge coming through that digital format today. But what ends up happening is I noticed that um, I had a question um, because of the earth and her changes. Casey discusses and, and uh, talks about the earth naturally goes through. And I wanted to just prove this years ago <laughs> and five years later, after working through geological, scientific and metaphysical, spiritual studies, I found it was real. Uh, but Casey states that the earth herself goes through the 
um, pole shift or axial shift change every 100, 125,000 years. And she does it in increments of a quarter turns each. Whereas Hawaii was, uh, scientists note today, that Hawaii was in, at the Antarctic Circle. And Hawaii, as I've been sh guided and shown, will end up being in the Arctic Circle. So what I'm, I'm going to ask is the ley lines, since do they still connect to the Earth's crust or lithosphere? Or do they also move and change? Okay, <laughs> let's, I, uh, I, I appreciate your questions. I wasn't aware of uh, the KC uh, material that you're referencing on, on the axial shift, so I appreciate that. I'll, I'll take a good close look at that. I, I would say everything in creation mm -hmm. is based on geometry, everything yes. that occupies 3D space. All beings who live in this 3D reality share geometry as a kind of a universal language. It's inherent in ourselves, in our DNA. Geometry is inherent in uh, our, our brain waves, and so that we're, we're resonating, we're vibrating, we're like antenna vibrating at the same frequencies as these geometries. The Earth itself, uh, I believe, is a conscious, divine being, also moving into higher levels of perfection in, in the ascension process. Mm -hmm. And that even as, even as the crust shifts, these yeah. geometries remain inherent in the earth itself. Uh, these, these monuments, uh, such as the Great Pyramid, Meta Triangle, Easter Island, that we find at these precise geometric points, um, these, these are shifting, and certainly uh, we would expect that these underlying energies, let's say, are moving perhaps from simpler to more complex forms. Yes. Evolve. Yes. Evolve. This, um, follow up question: Is that does that address your question pretty thoroughly? That was good. Yes. Um, well, actually, I did have one more. Okay, so they're they're going to energetically say the same. It reminds me of a net. That we could imagine a net, that's okay, Sorry. digital time. <laughs> if we could imagine, say, a net across the globe itself, and that you're saying that net, even though there will be crustal changes happening, can you hear me okay, Dan? And you're frozen, so I am not sure. If I'm you with you. Hear. Okay, good. Okay, if those, okay. Okay, I'm hearing you good. Thank you. If those, uh, like a net, would move across um, the surface, so the ley lines would be the net. And so you're saying those crustal changes still, the ley line net is still intact, is what you're saying. I believe that's true. Okay. I believe that's true. It's, it's definitely open for debate. I have an opinion about it. The researchers will have different opinions. Yes. Um, but I think even as the tectonic plates move across, and we see this really clearly, for example, on Hawaii, because you said on Hawaii, when we look at the geometric shape, which is with regard to the globe, yes, yes, uh, the tetrahedron being uh, like a pyramid but with four triangular faces, so a triangular based pyramid, right? And we inscribe that in the globe with one point at the North Pole, the mm -hmm. other points of the tetrahedron come out at 19.5 degrees latitude. Ah, now, the, the tetrahedron, Right, so the tetrahedron is a dual of itself. So if you flip the point so that it's at the South Pole, now those two tetrahedral nests, you've got a very ah. beautiful star tetrahedron. Oh my so, goodness, it's beautiful. I'm sorry. So, these, no, <laughs> uh, so, so uh, if you nest a tetrahedron or a star tetrahedron within the globe, now those points come out at 19.5 degrees north and south latitude. So here we find the Hawaiian Islands. Yes. And uh, readers, uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, just to remind listeners, uh, the Hawaiian Islands are a chain of islands that are being formed as a stable hot spot yes. underneath the oceanic crust uh, 
there's a stable hot spot underneath the crust as the oceanic crust moves over it creates a chain of islands archipelago yeah, so that night that 19.5 to yeah yeah 19.5 degrees north marks this upwelling of energy it, and it, effectively it's a tetrahedron point mm. yeah so uh the same is true for there's a mountain uh, that is by far the most prominent mountain in its part of Africa, which is Mount Emikusi, and that's also at 19.5 degrees. And then your, some of your listeners will be familiar with uh, the Richard Hoagland uh, yes. uh, material on Mars. That's also yes. based on the tetrahedral geometry. Those monuments are at the tetrahedral point, 19.5 degrees on Mars. Yes. And we see it uh, on the red spot on Jupiter. That's also, it's massive, gas planet and everything, but that's also approximately at that 19.5 degrees latitude. So yeah. we see these geometries inherent in not just the Earth, but in other planets as well. And these geometries are also inherent with a, within our aura, our energy field. Yes, yes. Even though, again, as I said, even though it is unseen, uh, there are those that have eyes to actually see and perceive this. So we're supposed to work at that perception to improve it. Um, and that vision we have for the world expands with that same knowledge. You can see it as a plant, or you could see it as a, a fern, or you could learn the Latin name for it, uh, Fernatus Tenatus, whatever it is, you know? So it's a gradient of the same knowledge of the same item, but an expanded view. So I have a quick question yeah. for you. <laughs> uh, I have a quick question on, as you mentioned, the Mount Isu in Africa as well. I noticed at the point that I was guided or given by the guides as the, that would end up being the final location of this, this next actual change for the South Pole would be Cape Town, South Africa. And that is off the great Zimbabwe line in your work that you've uh, shown in your um, publications. And that great Zimbabwe line intrigued me because above it is the, the Kabbalah tree of life, Catch her at the top, and uh, so I wanted to know, and I'm going to just show if I could help share if it's visible here. I articulated this globe to match what I had been given by the guides to confirm what they were telling me. So we have the new South Pole, sorry, at that point of Cape Town. Okay, this is the old equator line or equatorial line. Okay, and then. This is the new Antarctic line, and we already know the South Pole has quickly moved away from the current Antarctica. So I'm wondering, at this point of Cape Town, of the new South Pole to come, that literally, because it is on that Kabbalistic tree of light, well, all of them are, but in that area of the Great Zimbabwe line, if that will have a, that's again an energetic line, correct? So what I'm saying is I was given this information in 2010. <laughs> okay. Well, it's exciting. It's exciting to see your, see your work. Thanks for sharing that. Mm -hmm. the, uh, mm, there's a, a couple, uh, I think, uh, distinctions that's, that are important to make here. Uh, one is that the, the Earth has an, an axial or geographic pole north north and south geographic poles right. and also also magnetic poles my yes. work is 40 years in just that alone just on that point and i want the audience to know that the north pole is always very closely in miles to the geographic the magnetic north pole always remains close it catches up to the actual magnetic pole and most people aren't no don't realize that it always is close. You have magnetic north, and then you have geographic north. They always, throughout history, and that's what Casey was talking about, literally, it confirms. So even though the scientists are only able to see 82 times, they see geographic or axial pole shift, and they've been able to discern 139 times magnetic pole shift. However, they couldn't see the traces as it got closer. So that was already confirmed. I have a whole discourse of, on my website, antoniallowed.org, and you can go see the information act, um, through a workshop that I presented, but I've been presenting and teaching this since early, mm, oh my goodness, since the, for many decades now, because as I was guided or shown or given. And the reason why is because the earth grows as we do. 
if we had the same clothes on when we were three, we'd look kind of silly. So we want her to go through her natural, normal cycles, and it produces a symbiosis for the Earth's growth and humankind's evolution. So finally, and as well as that ascension process happened. So while Earth is ascending, humankind is ascending to match that energetic level. But what I was interested in is that, um, that particular line, because I was shocked when I found it in your work to match that line of the great Zimbabwe ley line. And I thought, that's interesting. It's right exactly on that ley line. So either wow. the... Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, have, so, I have a lot to learn from you, for sure. <laughs> um, I just want to... Uh, um, my, my focus has been, again, on, on these energies, these uh, often geophysical energies, but also more subtle energies uh, that and how they affect our human physiology. I oh, good. Got, a degree in geog got a degree in geography to help me understand and explain that. Uh, so I, I'll, uh, I'm, let's say, I don't always believe the standard scientific models, That's but I, I will <laughs> reference them. I'll reference the standard scientific models um, because uh, the electromagnetic field is largely unseen by human eyes birds yeah. bees and fish all have a magnetic sense they're able to sense the electromagnetic field and part of what I'm doing is helping to people to tap in be more aware of yes. what is largely unseen which is to look and I sometimes say to look with electromagnetic eyes yes so uh, in terms of <clears throat> the magnetic field of the earth uh, we, we can see on the seafloor, where the seafloor is spreading, at these deep sea trenches where the seafloor is spreading, what Mariana's we see is stripes train. of mm -hmm. magnetism. You're talking example, about the Marianas and the Pacific We see stripes, rim? magnetic striping. Uh, okay. At, well, the, the Earth Star Globe actually very beautifully corresponds with these deep sea trenches. The, the crust, the oceanic crust, is essentially getting recycled. And where new crust is being born, yes. as, as the magma cools into lava, yes. it takes on the magnetic field of the Earth. It hardens, essentially, and gives us a, a paleomagnetic imprint. Uh, so that we're able to, we, we can study the past magnetic field of the Earth Correct. by looking at lava that's hardened th uh, throughout geologic ages. So. Correct. We know for a fact we we can we know uh, to the best we can know anything that the magnetic field of the Earth has been flipping over geologic time. Before yes. it flips, it gets kind of sloppy, and yes. you may see uh, two, two North Poles for a That's time, correct. or uh, sure. you know the, the two, magnetic four. pole uh, moving more rapidly. We're seeing right now the North magnetic pole moving yes. more rapidly than we have seen in previous. Yes, but then when we start to talk about uh, the actual crust um, having cataclysmic change um, where, you know, there's a tremendous amount of momentum built up in the Earth's crust and in the Earth's right. core, both the molten part of the core, there's a solid part of the core. Um, the, any kind of a geographic shift in poles is going to have to be cataclysmic. The oceans are going to spill over the continents. And we're living on uh, almost like on the skin on milk that's been yes. boiling. Uh, the, cr the crust, the continental crust is, uh, you know, not nearly so solid as we give it credit for. We're living in a blink uh, in geologic time span. So um, it's, it's entirely possible. In fact, uh, there's uh, some vortex researchers who've shown uh, essentially equators of ancient monuments that they suggest are um, actually ancient equators. Yes. So correct. there's there are vortex researchers who would certainly agree with that the the hypothesis that you're putting forth about a new equator, a new South Pole. Um, it's it okay. does it touches on but goes a little far afield from my focus as a vortex researcher. But you're absolutely right about Zimbabwe and that the country is named after an ancient monument. Yes. which is Great Zimbabwe, massive yes. megalithic monument, which is on the grid points there. Yes. So it is possible, just to kind of wrap a bow on this, uh, <laughs> it's, I would say you've suggested it to me. Now I'm just beginning to consider it, but it seems possible that the, the energetic, the grid lines 
themselves will almost determine where the wheel stops. If the oh, if right. the if if there is a geographic shift, it's possible that these energetic net, as you describe it, provides a kind of um, a kind of a stability or stopping yes. point. Yes. If that makes sense. That's what I'm hearing you suggest. Yes. And what, what I was saying was, and I, again, I don't, uh, like I said, we have no place for time for fear. I believe knowledge is power. And since this has happened in, on the history of 4.5 years of our earth, we should be familiar with it. And as the ancient Atlanteans did, they were familiar. They planned and told, you know, their civilizations, we need to prepare these. And so we see ancient civilizations today that, that uh, divers are finding underneath beautiful mosaic floors and cultures that were very uh, modern, okay, and even in our ancient times. But what we see is that they too were above the surface at some point. And as we go through these changes, that's why they're not there now. So we, t we, we must realize and accept and, and always constantly, nothing is, uh, what is it? Nothing is um, constant but change. And so we must grow to accept it, even though it's a cycle that's outside our known history, we need to recognize, and, but it's not just a physical change. With these beautiful energetic lines you talked about, the beautiful ley lines or energies, we must increase our energies physically, spiritually, and mentally to prepare. And most people are not working on those portions, especially the spiritual centers. And so ultimately, the earth is replicating our own energies and our, our energies of uh, human beings on the earth are replicating all the way out through the cosmos. So an easy way perhaps for people to get in tune with those energies would be, as you mentioned before, meditate. Humans were supposed to learn on the earth to meditate, it said, three hours of the day. Well, at monasteries they do, but what happens is the human life in our way, we tend not to. So there should be a meditation at least, try five minutes a week, and then move it to 20. Use tons of the guide, I do meditations, but tons of meditations on the YouTube that are guided. Then they need to also offset that with the growth in the normal day to keep pace with the vibratory rate changing on the planet herself and through the cosmos, and the ley lines to jump to that next level of evolution. So ultimately, there's meant to grow. It's no good if you're, uh, you're supposed to raise your spiritual awareness to match your high intelligence. Otherwise, it's out of balance. It's, it, it alters. So mind and body and soul in this three-dimensional world I need that balance. And we, we can never, if you're going to raise your intellect more, then raise the spiritual, then raise the physical. And always these energies permeate. But humankind, I want this to be taught, Dan, in grammar school at that level, high school and college. But unfortunately, it's been taken away. However, our elite pay for brilliant scientists not to tell the population, but they use the information for their benefit only. And of course, we know that is not divine law. We know that's not correct. So unfortunately, they don't know better. So we promise to be incarnating at this time, knowing that they would try to stop us from the knowledge. And we need to not be angry at them. Forgive them. They don't know better. But we need to, again, grow spiritually, mentally, emotionally. It's amazing. We can brush our teeth and shower and get ready 15, 20 minutes, 30. But we won't take 5 minutes, 20, 30 to listen to divine input or connect divinely, which is kind of a sad thing. So I'm hoping your grandchildren have it in their classrooms one day, <laughs> you know, and other kids are starting some school. <laughs> so ultimately, yes, what I, yes. And uh, go ahead. I was going to say, uh, people often ask uh, when I get to this energy point, whether it's a, a, you know, the woods, a park, a beach, a mountaintop, whatever it might be, then, then what do I do? And uh, I'm, I'm not a very, a dramatic person uh, myself generally uh it's uh i'm i'm not a particularly ceremonial person but I do whatever ceremony i tell people do whatever ceremony feels appropriate for you uh, i would say take off your shoes that way you actually connect your energy field to the earth it does scientifically it affects the way that your cells experience that mm -hmm. and uh uh breathe the air uh if there's any uh, wild foods in abundance, eat a little bit of wild food. Yes. If the water's safe to drink, drink a little water. 
uh, I mentioned at Waterfalls, we're actually breathing in the negative ions. I have uh, used ion generators since they first came out. I mm -hmm. have one running 24 mm -hmm. seven. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, uh, you know, drink in the colors of the place yes. and the sounds and smells of the place. Uh, these are all part of the, the vortex effect there. And, and then uh, be still, yes, and meditate in whatever way you do and, and uh, be open to receive the gifts that are there. And hopefully, uh, you know, think in terms of bringing a small offering, bringing a gift to the place. Oh, yes. and. Uh, and bringing a trash bag and, and leaving the place cleaner than you found it. I'm a big believer, if you're gonna go take a walk in the woods, you just take a bag with you and pick up all the garbage because for some reason, the last few generations don't understand that pack it in, pack it out thing. And I'm, yeah. I'm not quite sure why that happened, but if you're there, let's just pick it up and maybe it'll encourage when somebody sees you take that giant bag out to the car, let's encourage other people to do it. So just grab a bag, just keep it in your, a box of them and keep it in your car. You're ready to go. But um, yeah, it's yeah. also an energetic intention. You're saying, I care and love the earth and care for its beauty. And I'm taking this man-made trash garbage out of here so it doesn't right. diminish any of that energetic. Uh, and I'm also right. one, I'm a big one for connecting to the bonds of nature, to trees, to the plants and to the animals yes. that are out there. So you're saying that that gives us the sensitivity to feel these energetic ley lines. Well, we, we, are, we are a living electromagnetic systems. Every cell is electromagnetic right. and we, we are affected and impacted by the energetic fields around us. And we are often not paying attention to those unseen fields and we're bombarded by uh, man-made electromagnetic fields as well. So, when we do get out into places which are, let's say, I'm fond of the term islands of infinity, places that are relatively mm -hmm. untrampled and relatively quiet, then we can open up to these more subtle sensations. Mm -hmm. And it's entirely possible for us to sense these subtle energies with the, every cell of our brains has a minute amount of magnetite. And in our sinuses, yes. or you could say our third eye, we have greater amounts of magnetite. So there is a plausible mechanism for us also to have this magnetic sense. So being open to the possibility, uh, creating the opportunity, preparing in whatever way you do, packing, whatever you prepare, dress, and yes. um, creating the opportunity there to, to have that connection, sitting with the trees and slowing down to more of the, the pace of nature. Yes which humans have forgotten. If you understand or recognize, I've never been able to live within a city. I can go in and out and back and forth, but I always have to live uh, in some sort of nature or a, a surrounded by nature. The other energy is discordant with the other natural energy is healing or it's, I resonate more to that. Mm -hmm. So a city is great to go in and out of, go back and forth, <laughs> but not to stay, not to, uh, if you want to incorporate all those beautiful energies that nature is permeating with that beautiful net of ley lines. So ultimately people can get in tune, but Dan, they can always find more information on your well website, vortexmaps.com. You have a lot of good downloadable information. And Discord and I, yes. And I'm always, uh, I read every email and I will respond to every inquiry. And I want to thank the audience today for, for this moment in time. What we're going to do is suggest, and I'm going to pause this one for a second here because that shouldn't be coming. But ultimately, it does happen, and we have to watch that. Okay, sorry, and thank you, the audience, for that interruption. But I was going to suggest or say this is my moment in time that I give back to you. And um, I want to let the audience know that as a professional psychic, I've done over 50,000 readings in my career. I'm a hard and fast skeptic and I like proof. But today we'd like to share my gift back for you coming on, Dan, is a mini reading on the air. So a specific question, not a general one. And they're going to tell you the answer and all about how it affect your life. And of course, you always have free will to apply that information or not. So um, the audience have to recognize store friend gypsies is not the same thing. There are gradients of uh, baby psychics, I call them, and kindergarten psychics and high school psychics and graduate school psychics. So they have to be discerning. It's best to usually be by referral where their heart is guided to go. Um, and then remember, they have free will to apply the information or not. 
So you're welcome to go on my website if you want more information about that or about my work uh, in the fields of um, spirituality, spiritual growth, and as well as the world changes at um, antonialau.org. You can see in the comments and descriptions where to reach the website as well. So today, do you have a question for me, Dan? And you're quiet for the moment. I've, I've taken the Bodhisattva. Like you, I've taken the Bodhisattva vow to not to ascend until every last sentient being has ascended. <sighs> Sorry, I'm excited. I'm shocked because most people don't understand. I, I don't. There's no race to get there, but we need to help everybody get there. It doesn't do the collective. So I love that. Beautiful. Shocked and happy to hear. <laughs> mm. So I think that uh, I know for, for certainty for myself that the guides and angels who have gone before me, gone before us, they've left signposts along the way. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. That is excellent. And doing my part to pass along the gifts uh, that I've received who are exploring and literally exploring these paranormal places so i'm always looking to um up my game really to so my question uh, is you know how um what's the most on purpose way for me to uh take my next step to to the next level of um of sharing this information i'm, I'm going to do that that's a little general and that'd be an hour-long reading we could cover all that but for, for the mini reading for the air I'm going to ask or suggest we formulate it in a way that think of a path that you thought about exploring to doing explain. my dharma. Oh, okay. Oh, well, in particular, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I, I am talking to television producers Perfect. and uh, there's, there's often a, a little bit of uh, give and take in that uh, uh, television producers are, are always looking for the high drama right. and, uh, uh, my approach is a, a little quieter. So uh, I have a little bit of uh, conflict about um, how to how to bring our agendas into perfect alignment. Is that, can you help me frame that as a? Yes, I'll help you phrase it. Perhaps you might question. ask, uh, you're asking to the divine universe, not me or you because we're human. Therefore, 2% of the brain is all we've got, so to speak. But they are where you're asking for this input from the divine universe in your own way with love and respect to them always. But I would suggest phrasing it this way. On the path you are currently headed regarding this issue with getting your points across, will you be successful in getting to an, an agreement with them between now and the next six months, now and the next year, that will put across your message for the world? Isn't that what you really want to know? Um. That I think that's really close. I, I when okay. we're asking when we're asking questions, um, whether we're dowsing uh, sure. with a pendulum or muscle testing or whatever we're doing, I, I always feel that asking the right question is correct. Ninety nine percent of the battle. That I, the, when I ask the right question, often the answers will uh, obviously already be evident. Um, and uh, so, or, or so you I, could I could suggest. If you continue working with these television producers, will you be successful at achieving your goal in this? Between, and if there's a time frame you need, we can use a time frame or not. Well, let's say, um, what would be a useful strategy for me to, um, to really derive the highest good for everyone from this They'll tell you all that, but we phrase the question so it's answered by yes, nor maybe, then they'll tell you the answer plus how it affects your life. So they'll be that inclusive. So, so something that we can form, they will answer the question, and then I'll tell you all about how it affects that question. They'll show you the strategy. Okay, so, well. so do you have a so, point of reference? You're talking about the television producers. and Will you come to an understanding? Oh, it's, a, well, it's... It's almost always the case, you know, the television producers, they, they call with, they've got a certain script in mind and, and now mm -hmm. uh, it's up to me to kind of make the most of it in terms of uh, conveying uh, my, uh, really the enthusiasm, the possibility of the divine uh, just filling us up. 
so do you want to know if on the pathway you're headed that will come to pass you'll be able to fill up fill us up with that information based on what has been discussed um, with you i think i need i um it'd be i'd like to have some guidance on okay. on how to steer the ship so that i get the best results with this there particular relation, relationship that i'm developing all right, and sorry for the audience for the glitches. We understand that Dan is outside and those satellites just don't work sometimes as well as they should. So ultimately, we're going to ask that question non-verbally in your mind, please, to the divine universe. I'm going to suggest phrasing it this way. Will you be successful in reaching the goal to get the information widespread with the current, um, like I said, group that you're dealing with? And now think it to the divine universe, not me or you. As I shuffle, I want you to, this is a third point of reference with the Tarot, Astrology, Numerology, to confirm what I'm seeing and hearing. I actually see and hear the guide, and they will show you, and you have free will to apply. Concentrate on the question to the divine, will you be successful in getting the information to a widespread audience through them at this time? And think it to the divine, and say stop whenever your heart says stop, please, Dan. Stop. And the reason why the universe knows the backstory and who you're dealing with and what's been going on, so you never have to cover that. But we want to know on our direction, and that's where they tend to show us. And as I lay them out, I'll get not only you. Oh, I'm happy to see this. It's always on the air you want. Mm. <laughs> okay, on the path where you're headed, you understand that means your attitude and approach and what you're planning with this particular producer or producers now. The answer is yes. It's not just a more than like or maybe. It's a yes. It does show me. Dan, literally, Dan, if you stayed balanced, just like we said earlier, they're confirming goosebumps all over the place. If you stayed balanced, mind, body, and soul, you will achieve recognition amongst your peer, the public, or the media on this venue. It shows me there's an offer, an opportunity um, that you're hoping for, your thoughts and thinking from that production team or whatever, and it's actually from the divine universe. It's actually a, a, something you would absolutely love, but it's a gift from God Creator plucking you in place. I always say, tell the universe to put me where I'm best. You know, they determine exactly where the soul's meant to be. It also shows me on the attitude, oh, your attitude or approach, and this is human. It shows me the universe is trying to give you, they said, script ideas and ideologies, but there is a slight tendency for left brain to not pay attention what the divine universe may be offering. So I'm going to suggest those little plugs they show me as you go to sleep and cat naps, a little feed of ideas, and the left brain may discount it, tell it to shut up. Right brain is being fed that information. Right brain is not made to, actually left brain is not made to deduce solutions. It can store facts and figures and think, but it, it only goes, what about this? What about that? The solutions come from higher self connected to the divine universe and down through the subconscious mind or right brain. And we're supposed to learn to wear that wall down between right brain and conscious mind. So it shows me there has been a tendency for you to not quite hear the divine guidance on this to get your goal. That's okay, human nature. It does show me here um, the divine universe's input on your question then. It shows me that coming along, they said in one month's time, um, according to that uh, cycle of time that you're on with this one, it shows me within one month, it could be a little longer balloon if you choose or they choose to protract that agreement, but it shows me within one month's time, the exact words I heard, there's sort of gonna be some new concept. They said a brilliant concept. So they said, so go with the flow and then somebody comes in with a, hey, they think it's their idea. But it was really a download from the divine universe through them that meets and matches your own. It also shows the divine universe's influence on this from God Creator. It shows me literally that they're going to be giving you dreams. So these are what I call the waking dreams, not the um, dream, symbolic dreams. This is the dream just upon waking. The divine universe will give you that input in a literal sense. They will show you a name or a number or a focus. And if you act on it upon waking, you get major opportunity. And I'm, I'm, again, I, I'm not everybody's cheerleader. And actually, I am their cheerleader, but I can't placate you. I won't just give you what you want to hear. I'm going to tell you what I, they're showing me. Now, it also shows me on the path you're headed. The whole point is you expand in your view of how you're going to do this. If you go through a narrow shoot or narrow focus, it limits the opportunity for income, what happens. But if you expand to the divine universe and literally open the expanded focus, that's those same ideologies and concepts. It shows me go to a broader field that you can arrange for it for this. But on the path you headed, it is yes. It shows me again in the last three weeks. The divine universe has been trying to give you a litany or a list in your dream states and a tendency for the human side not to hear it. 
It does show me a female could be dark hair to dark eye, tan to olive to brown skin, literally could be giving you input that you will apply in the next three weeks that could be on your course. Oh my goodness. And the outcome is ultimately a lot of happiness plus um, the joy of what you're doing in life, plus the pay that comes with that. Remember, in this world, render under Caesar so far. So what happens is those money, the true purpose of money is to complete the mission the soul has promised. Without it, we tend to worry about all those other mundane things in the world we have to deal with. This way, it shows me between now and the next three weeks, it could be as long as three months because I see if they protract it. But if I were you, I'd ask the universe to align each person and put them into that alignment. So on the astral plane, everybody's discussing this. And I like the guy. He looks like he has glasses. Um, they have a dark rim and they have, he has a dark shock of hair and it shows me he will be like this brilliant idea all of a sudden, but he doesn't talk much. He'll just come up with, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and then bing, a brilliant idea. He looks like he's working an adjunct into that, with that team. Okay. Of producers, but it does show me in the path of your head. It, the answer is yes. Thank you. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> that was my exchange back and always should be an even energy of exchange for, for the benefit of others. I truly appreciate your presence today. And for the audience, you can always see more about Dan Shaw's work at vortexmaps.com and for myself and my work at antonialau.org. And I want to wish the audience all the best. Likewise. Thank you.